level physics. So we are here on our title. Our chapter name is Dynamics. Dynamics come every year. Dynamics come every year in our paper two, in our paper one. It is a sister chapter of kinematics. These are the main topics. And we have to give a heading, Newton's laws of motion. Perhaps we had given this heading, Newton's laws of motion. And then the heading after that is first law. Okay. The concept, Newton suggested that every object possesses inertia. So when you are sitting in a car and the car is moving and the car suddenly stops, you get a forward jerk. That is why people are always, uh, always wearing a seat belt for protection. When you're sitting in a, when you're sitting in a car and the car suddenly stops, you get a jerk. That is why passengers are advised to wear seat belt in an aeroplane when it is taking off. So Newton had a very remarkable idea. He thought that objects do not want to stop if they are moving and they do not want to move when they are at rest. It means state of rest or state of motion. Both are, both are persistent motions. Objects do not want to change their state. Uh, for example, our planet is moving around the sun for uh, from the start and not consuming, not using any energy. So this is an idea of uh, a so-called inertia there also. Now you have to copy this statement. You can let me know on the chat or on the mic once you have copied it. This statement is not important in the paper. As, as my habit, as my habit, I will be telling you... Uh, the important topics, the less important, the rare topics. Newton's first law is not their favorite topic to come in the paper. Okay. Thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. Newton's law of motion, the first law is about our O-level concept, inertia. So many people call it law of inertia. And as I mentioned, dynamics and kinematics come together like physical quantities, base units, and uh, uncertainty come together. These are called club questions. Uh, these are called club questions. There are also some other clubs in our course. Physical quantities like base units and uh, uncertainty questions, they come together. Similarly, kinematics, the sketches and uh, the dynamics, which we have started now, they come together. Uh, as far as projectile is concerned, it's a standalone topic and it always come alone as a separate topic. Now, you have to see the inertia. We have just discussed that inertia is the property of mass. Inertia is the property of mass due to which an object resist any change in its state of motion on rest. For example, this is a card and a coin is there. If you gently click the uh, card, the coin will fall in the glass. Why? Because of greater inertia. Now you have to give the heading inertia. Okay, sir.
Don't soon. Inertia. Inertia is the property of mass due to which an object resists any change in its state of motion or rest. Inertia is the property of mass. So due to mass, due to mass, uh, every object resists any change in its state of motion. Apart from mass, inertia also emerges from the velocity, from the speed. For example, inertia of a bullet, inertia of a bullet is due to its speed. Inertia of uh, an aeroplane is due to its mass as well as its velocity. Now, you okay. have to copy this definition. Then, sir. Then, sir. Now, I move to my next concept, inertia has no formula and hence no unit. This is our A-level concept. In A-level, uh, when inertia was discovered, scientists thought a lot, but no formula could be discovered. So when you are sitting in a car and you get a forward jerk, the car brake, the yeah. observation is there. The observation is there. Some people even get it strongly, but problem was there. There was no way to measure it. So in our course, our third concept for today, inertia was originally an observation. Inertia is due to mass, due to velocity, and inertia has no formula. When it has no formula, then definitely it has no unit. You have to copy this. Okay, done, sir. Answer. Inertia depends upon two fundamental quantities, mass and velocity. I mentioned these two, three points in, in my every class. This is our way to uh, induce a temperament because AS physics is a short session. Hardly five to six months are there in which you have to do everything because uh, by March, schools take the mocks and uh, uh, April is like a revision month. So remember this point in AS physics, no topic is in detail. All good, all good students feel that because they have been in O level and topics are, are in detail also, motor, generator, transformer, CRO. AS works on a temperament that you read something, okay? You read inertia depends upon mass, inertia depends upon velocity. It's over, no detail. Why mass, why velocity, nothing. AS physics is actually structure paper. So you do not, you're not, you're not supposed to give any long theory answer. Now you have to copy this concept. Inertia depends upon mass. Inertia depends upon speed. Okay, sir. Done. Done, sir. Inertia is emerging from mass and velocity. Now I come to another famous concept, O level concept, resultant or unbalanced force. Resultant force means a force which is active on an object. And uh, one example which I can give and which is a unique, which is a very good example to recall that five Newton on right side and five Newton on left side, the resultant force will be equal to zero. The resultant force will be equal to zero. The resultant force is zero, yet the object will rotate in this diagram. Why this is a case here? The two forces are not acting on the same point. Then why it is zero here? Because the two forces are acting on the same point. Now you have to give a heading, resultant or 
unbalanced force. Answer. Now, this is an example. This is an example of balanced forces. These are called balanced forces. Now, look at this screen. The two forces are balanced. And this symbol, this symbol is read as Resultant force, you have to copy this screen. Okay, sir. Done, sir. So these are called these are called balanced forces. Actually, once you recall our O level concept of balanced forces, you can easily recall the concept of unbalanced forces. So these, these, these they were called balanced forces. Now we have a related concept here. We had a related concept here. 5 Newton with 5 Newton. They are also 5 Newton, but the resultant force is not 0. Resultant force is 0, yet the object will rotate because they are not acting on the same point. Now, I want to get another concept line from O level. Forces are balanced. If forces are balanced, then acceleration will also be 0. Zero acceleration is a very important condition in our A level O level physics, and it is called equilibrium. When the aeroplane is taking off, the passengers are advised to wear the seat belt. But once the aeroplane is horizontal and running smooth, the passengers can sit relaxed. It is called equilibrium. When you learn how to bicycle in the start, you initially fall. But later you understand how to balance. Once you balance a motorcycle or a bicycle, you call it equilibrium. This is an equilibrium. In physics, equilibrium primary condition is there. Acceleration should be equal to zero. So I'm putting my fourth concept for today. I'm putting my fourth concept, which I'm bringing from O level for my connection point here. If acceleration is zero, it is called equilibrium. Now, there are two possibilities. Object is not moving at all, but or object is moving at its constant speed, like uh, terminal speed. You have to copy this screen. Okay, sir.
done, sir. Okay, good. Done, sir. Now we are moving towards second law. The second law is very important and uh, Cambridge actually gives this law whenever needed. The second law should be marked very important. It comes very frequently in the paper, in nearly in every second paper. It's there and this will be our tagging. First law is rare. First law comes rarely in the paper. Second law was very famous in O level. We studied in O level that uh, second law says that if an external unbalanced force acts on an object, it produces acceleration in the object. This acceleration is directly proportional to the applied force and it is in the same direction as the external force. Remember this was this is an O level statement. This is an O-level statement and there is another statement which will come later, which will come later in this chapter that is accepted here, not this one. So if an external, uh, Newton had a suggestion that suppose that you have an object and uh, this is seven Newton and this is two Newton, then resultant force will be equal to seven minus two, which means five Newton. So this is a five Newton case. Newton had a view that this five Newton will create, this five Newton will create acceleration. And he had a further idea that if this is the resultant force, acceleration will also be in the same direction. I repeat the concept. Newton had a, Newton had a view that uh, you first find resultant force. Once you find the resultant force, that resultant force creates acceleration. Acceleration and uh, resultant force are always in the same direction. Resultant force and acceleration are always in the same direction. Now you have to copy this screen. So this is Newton's second law, yeah? Sorry? This is Newton's second law of motion. Yes, this is Newton's second law of motion. Okay, sir. Answer. Force and acceleration are 
directly proportional in this law force and acceleration are directly proportional so greater the resultant force remember this is called resultant force greater the resultant force greater is the acceleration this is the directly proportionality and whenever something is directly proportional it's always passing through origin and it is always a straight line so newton had a view that greater the resultant force greater would be the acceleration remember resultant force is the difference between the two applied forces or three applied forces maybe four also so after that you have to copy this screen so i didn't copy the last line can you show it for one second okay Okay, thank you, sir. Answer. Answer. Resultant force is directly proportional to A. F -A, and when you remove the proportionality sign, you always have to put a constant, and the constant is mass here. Newton had a strong idea that mass is a universal constant. No doubt, later Einstein challenged that idea, and you will study this concept in the end of the course, that mass is a mass is also a variable because some mass can convert into energy, as we had some idea in O-level also. But for the, for the Newton physics, mass is considered to be a constant, universal constant. You have to copy this small derivation. Answer. Answer. Force and acceleration are always in the same direction. When we were doing uh, the kinematics chapter, we had discussed this concept before also that vectors are always designated with their direction. When you take a U-turn, when you take a U-turn, velocity becomes negative. But displacement does not become negative. Displacement becomes negative when you go beyond the starting point. Similarly, acceleration has also some dimensional features. Acceleration as a vector, acceleration as a vector, always take the same direction as the force. So Newton suggested that Force and acceleration are always in the same direction. So now you have to copy this screen. Done, sir. Answer. 
Now, result, the resultant force and acceleration are always in the same direction. Now, you have to look, look at this diagram. And uh, this is the resultant force. This is the resultant force and resultant force and acceleration are in the same direction. So you have to copy now this screen. So is resultant force always smaller than, um, sorry, is acceleration always more, smaller than resultant force? Uh, acceleration is normally not a big number, 0 0.5 to maximum 9.8, but acceleration can be greater than the resultant force because as a number, as a number, it can be anything. Okay. But normally, acceleration is not a big number. The, the very big acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity, and that was 10 in O level, and now here it, it would be 9.8. Okay, understood. Done, sir. Now Done, sir. I'm I'm putting another concept here. When forces are unbalanced, there is an acceleration. Acceleration depends directly upon the net force, and acceleration depends inversely to the mass. This is my next concept that greater the mass, greater the inertia. Look at this sketch. I have acceleration on y-axis and mass on x-axis. The sketch shows that acceleration is inversely proportional to mass. For example, trains, aeroplanes, big objects, multi-wheelers are always difficult to stop. Why they are difficult to stop? Because their mass is high. Greater mass means low acceleration. That is why it's always easy to stop a motorcycle, a bicycle, but it's always difficult to stop and uh, stop a heavy vehicle. Now you have to write under it. You have to write under it this is screen. You have to copy this is screen. Sir, so if the mass is less, the inertia is more? Yes. Greater okay. the mass, greater the inertia, and smaller is the acceleration. When you can notice on a signal, when signal goes green, small vehicles, motorcyclists immediately go out. But heavy vehicles, trailers are always slowly taking off. Okay, sir. Done, sir. Done, sir. Now I'm putting an example here, and uh, this is a numerical case. The forward force is 8 Newton. The backward force is 2 Newton. And if you subtract, you will get the resultant force. It is an emphasis on that, that it is the resultant force which is going to create an acceleration. It is not the driving force. It is not the resistive force. 
it is the it is the resultant force which creates the acceleration so when resultant force is zero acceleration would be zero and velocity all time famous concept terminal would a velocity would be terminal so now you have to copy this i'm just coming i have to say maghrib namaz i'm just coming copy this screen when resultant force is zero acceleration is zero this is a concept which i told you people last time that this is a concept which comes in every paper when resultant force is zero acceleration is also zero object will be moving but at constant speed you have to copy this done sir Answer. Hmm. Resultant force is constant. If resultant force is not zero, if resultant force is not zero, if resultant force is not zero, <laughs> and resultant force is constant, then acceleration will also be a constant. 
it will be a single number. You have to copy this. Remember acceleration can be, remember acceleration can be, remember this concept that acceleration can be constant, acceleration can be, acceleration can be uh, changing. So in our kinematics chapter, we studied that acceleration can be uniform. It can also be non-uniform. Done, sir. Answer. This is called uniform acceleration. This is called uniform acceleration. Two, four, six, eight. One number. Acceleration is one number. This is called constant acceleration. Now comes in Oliver, it was very famous. Somehow it was very famous. And everyone, interestingly, everyone used to remember its statement and it is called Newton's third law. You have to copy this. Give this heading. Okay, sir. Done, sir. Now, this law, this law is very famous. Uh, if you talk about Newton's law, the Newton's third law, the Newton's third law, and uh, you remember, hopefully, the O-level definition, O-level statement, Newton had said, Newton had said, that every action has an equal but opposite reaction. This law was very famous in O level. Actually, worldwide, it's very famous. Uh, at its time, people, if even people still believe that it is the fundamental law in dynamics. So when you throw a ball to a wall, the ball strikes the wall and come back. If you drop a ball on a floor, if you drop a ball on a floor, the ball rebounds. This is actually this is actually a concept of Newton's third law. Newton suggested that every action has an equal but opposite reaction. Now, in our O level, in our O level, we had only this much law, but in A level, they want to clear it more. Newton law was not only that every action has an equal but opposite reaction. The law has some important parameters. The first, action and reaction must be opposite. Second, equal in magnitude. But very important, of the same nature, the reaction of weight will be another weight. The reaction of tension is another tension. Number four, which is also very important, that they do not act on the same object. When you drop a ball on a floor, the ball exerts some force on the floor as a reaction. Floor, as a reaction, floor exerts a force on the ball. So when you fire a gun, the gun recoil and the bullet goes forward. But the bullet travel more distance than the gun recoil. Then how they are equal in opposite. Newton had a view, a very important concept. Newton had a view that action and reaction are equal, but the effect, but the effect which appeared does not is the same. It is actually the inertia. For example, our planet is full of everything. Aeroplanes are moving. We are moving. The trains are moving. Even the war is going on. So, but still Earth has no problem. Why? Because Earth has a very big inertia. So Newton, Newton third law, Newton third law cannot be understood well until you connect it to inertia. No doubt, action reaction are equal. No doubt, action and reaction are equal, but their effect is not the same. So when a ball strikes the floor, the ball exerts some force. The floor, as a reaction, exerts a force on the on the ball. They are equal, but floor doesn't move, but ball rebounds. Why? 
बिकॉज बॉल हैज लो इनर्शिया अ वेरी टेक्निकल कॉन्सेप्ट टू रिमेंबर अ लो लेवल कॉन्सेप्ट You have to copy this screen now. Don sir, sir, what do you mean by low level reaction? No, no, I meant I said low level concept. Oh, okay, so like it's not really there. Okay. No, no, uh, it's a low level concept. Okay, sir. Done, sir. So I repeat my the I repeat the tricky concept behind this law. Newton suggested that action and reaction are equal. So you have a wall. and a ball is there the ball goes and strike the wall and rebound the ball exerts a force of 5 newton on the wall in return the wall also ex exerts a force of 5 newton the ball rebounds but the wall is there because newton had an idea that action reaction are equal but their inertia is not the same now look at the very important idea which is a very important confusion misconcept in our o level physics that the ball is hanging from a string now this is weight and this is tension so many people think that tension is the reaction of weight no it is not possible because they are acting on the same object so by rule by newton's third law the reaction of weight is another weight the reaction of tension is another tension that is why in a level physics you will many time you will you will find two tensions shown in a string now you have to copy this screen So, what do you mean by the T and the apostrophe? Uh, apostrophe. Let me write it. It's a good point you have highlighted that uh, I should have written it. Uh, here it is. This is. This is real. So, sir, it's like, uh, if it was dropped, it would that that's how it would that's the force. Ah, huh, actually, uh, the the concept of inertia, which I said, I want to clear here more, that he he asked in the in a question that if I cut this string, if I cut this string, uh, the ball will go down. Why the ground doesn't come up? The ball goes down because of gravitational attraction. Why the why the ground does not come up the answer would be inertia because the idea is simple that even though action and reaction are equal forces but the ball will move and the ground does not move why ground doesn't move because ground has a greater inertia that is why newton's third law is always difficult to understand even though the two forces are equal action reaction but the effect will be more observable 
for low inertia object. Now, I look at the look at some examples. Look at some examples of Newton's third law, which I have taken from the past paper. And remember that uh, A level again, which I sorry for repeating this uh, uh, this uh, theme actually. That AS level is a low level working. It's not high level questions. The forces or repulsion between an atom in the surface of a table and an atom in the surface of a book resting on the table looks very strange. Look at this diagram. One atom in the book and one atom in the table, they will apply force on each other because Newton law says the action reaction should be acting on two different objects. The force of repulsion experienced by each of the two parallel wires carrying currents in opposite direction. O-level famous concept. When two wires carry currents in opposite direction, the wires repel each other. This is Newton's third law. When the forces of attraction experienced by each of the two gas molecules passing near to each other, uh, in chemistry, you might have remembered the concept of van der Waal forces. The molecules attract each other and apply the force of attraction between an electron and a proton in a hydrogen atom. Look at this screen. Electron is orbiting the nucleus. They are applying equal forces. They are applying equal forces then why electron is orbiting the nucleus? Why the nucleus is not orbiting the electron? Answer is the same. Nucleus has a greater inertia. Now, <clears throat> so can you explain that point again? The electron is orbiting the nucleus. <clears throat> they are applying, they, they both are applying equal forces. They both are <clears throat> applying equal forces on each other. <clears throat> why? Electron is orbiting the nucleus. Why it doesn't reverse? Uh, I, I, I can rephrase the question. All the planets are orbiting the sun. Sun and planets are applying equal force on each other according to third law. Then why sun is sitting happily in the center and we are orbiting the sun? Why not we sit and sun orbit us? Answer would be no. Why? Even though the forces are same. Answer is there inertia answer is there inertia inertia determines the response of the force now we move to our next concept mass weight and gravitational field you have to give this heading <clears throat> okay sir Again, I will go back to my O level. This is a culture of AS level that for majority concept, you reverse, you go back to O level, and then you come back. Mass is the quantity of substance. It's a universal constant, and it has a unit of kg. Weight is the pull of gravity. It is a variable. It changes. It is a force, not quantity. You have to copy these two definitions. Okay, sir. Done, sir. Done, sir. Gravitational field is a field of attraction which is due to mass. Gravitational field is a field of attraction due to mass. This is called a gravitational field. Uh, we do not need much detail. We just remember, we just need to remember how much it was in O level that gravitational field is a force, is a field of attraction. The point should be highlighted here that it is not necessary that weight is downward. As our O level, we always used to have a concept that weight, weight is always acting downward. No, this is not necessary. 
weight is always directed towards the center of the source mass. Weight is always directed towards the center of the source mass. Now, give a side heading, gravitational field. Now, write under it that gravitational field, write under it, it is a field of attraction due to mass. It is a field of attraction due to mass. Then, sir. Now, you have to copy this screen. So what is flux? Flux is a word used in A level. I have written its parallel word for O level. You might remember this word, lines of forces. For example, when you check Wi-Fi signals in your mobile, you find this icon like these lines. In our O level, we used to call them lines of forces. The same concept in A level is called flux. Okay, sir. Done, sir. Done, sir. Now, right under it, weight is always directed. Weight is always directed towards weight is always directed towards towards the center of the source mass. Weight is always directed towards the center of the source mass. You have to copy this diagram. I'm sorry, update the diagram. Sir. So we keep it up to here and uh, this is our final point to discuss. We have discussed today and we will continue our topic inshallah in the next class. Thank you. Allah Hafiz. Love you, sir.